one case study I read in the in the last week is something called the Dollar Club. The Dollar Shave Club. Ha has anybody heard of this? The Dollar Shave Club. Diraj, have you heard of this? OK, no, no. OK. After class, I want you to go have a look. OK, it's quite cool. So as you may or may not know, uh, especially uh, uh, men in the group, uh, there's a company called Gillette. It makes the it makes like the shaving equipments like the razors and so on and so forth. I believe Gillette also makes some uh, f uh, shaving razors for females. I'm not very sure about this. OK, my understanding is very limited. So I have been buying Gillette for like a lot, lot of time ever since I was like 20 years old. So that's like I'm their customer for almost 15 years. It's like a certain in, in a certain sense. I feel it's like a tax for for being a, a groomed man or something. You need to pay Gillette money every month in a certain sense. And and if you see right, they invest a lot of money in R&D, right? They have like the triple racer, the four four racers, and they had like one of these Gillette uh, Mark Mark three. I think when when I was like 18 or 19 years old, my dad bought me this Gillette Mark three uh, turbo which was the like it, it was so expensive and it was my first time to see this whole package. And then when I was in Europe, I bought the Gillette Mark III Turbo a Ferrari edition. Or I don't know, like a sports car company edition, right? So my point here is they they build a lot of stuff. They invest a lot of money in marketing and they were world leaders and they still are in a certain sense for a long, long, long time, right? And then came along this little startup called the Dollar Shave Club, right? And this company out of nowhere, right? Out of nowhere started eating into the market share of a Titan like a Gillette without manufacturing a razor ever, right? So what they did was this Dollar Shave Club, It's it, they, they don't have a marketing platform. They don't have billboards and so on like Gillette and they don't hire big celebrities to uh, to endorse their products. They did three simple things. First is they made some collaborations with a Korean uh, shaving razor manufacturing company, right? So they don't build their products. They just build the design for their products. And this Korean company manufactures their products firstly, right? And second, what they did was they tried, they, they launched a YouTube campaign that highlights the pain point of the customer, which is very true, right? With Gillette, they're building so many products and so many services. I know I'm paying money to them, but I don't know if I'm actually getting some exponential innovation on top of my money. And, and it's 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 called the razor, the razor blade strategy. So every time you buy the Mark III, the razor will be like expensive, but not that expensive, but the blades will be like so expensive after that, right? So, and this is a trick they've been playing for ages and ages, right? And they have so vast product lines. So it's, it's very complicated to kind of know like where I am standing and how to connect with these products. And it's just a mess, right? What the Dollar Shave Club did was they just launched a YouTube campaign saying, oh, okay, see, you don't understand. You pay a monthly fee uh, like this. So how about instead of paying Gillette, right? You try our monthly subscription packages and so on. And then every time you buy their subscription, they will send you some gifts. Like for example, if they launched a shaving foam, right? They will package that with the with the blades that you buy uh, and then they'll send it to your home every month because you're going to consume it anyway, right? And then our, our products that they're going to launch in the future, they'll send you like a trial version of it or like send you a thank you card, just connecting with the story. And they started eating into the revenue uh, in, in, in for of Gillette. On a time uh, there was this pandemic and people like me, I, I grew a big beard because I don't have to go anywhere to lecture, right? I can lecture at home. I pretty much keep my camera off. So when I lecture, so so you know what I mean? That was the time that Gillette was losing market share while Dollar Shave Club was gaining market share. Anyway, this company is now acquired by Procter & Gamble, I, I believe. Anyway, you can read into the details, but my point here is focusing on the business instead of uh, manufacturing a razor. You see, understanding the customer, the, understanding the voice of the customer, uh, understanding the design that will solve the customer's problem, understanding how the user feels is more important in this age that we live in, wherein companies out of garage can 
like compete with titans of the industry that have been around for hundreds of years and and you know what i mean that's that's very interesting from a management standpoint and this is what keeps me very interested in management as such so probably you could have a look at this case study i don't know if it, it's very interesting something very interesting that i've looked at in the recent times and it just makes me feel like uh, understanding designing and you know what i mean uh, connecting have more relevance than building or uh, yeah investing in you know what i mean exponential amount of r d or hiring brand managers or bringing in the the, the highest celebrities to endorse a product you know what i mean so that's kind of something i've learned in the recent times and it's quite interesting so you could see what's happening in your own industry in this standpoint are some smaller players taking down or competing with bigger giants just by using better designs or just by using uh, more connectivity to the customer or something like this uh, so uh, diraja was i still audible i'm not sure yeah. Well, you are audible. Yeah, you can look into this case study. It's very interesting. Yeah, I just I went through it. Okay. Do you find it interesting? Yes. So yeah, the site is so simple. Like if you go to the website. Could you share share this? Could you share your screen and show people the give, website? Give me a second. Just give me a second. I'll just open yeah. it. Yeah. Because for me, I have some restrictions in my region to access the Dollar Shave Cups website. So I was reading it from a from an article, Can and imagine. Yeah, sure. Is my screen visible? Let me know. Yeah, could you pull pull up Gillette's portfolio and on the right hand side put Dollar Shave Clubs? That way they can understand what I was talking about. Because I'm not sure if everybody understands this complexity. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. had this one, the red one. I had the Gillette Mark III Turbo. I still use Gillette, but I use a razor from a Japanese company now uh, because, you know, after I became a teacher, I don't know, I, I had a very tough life when I was in my PhD and I had a lot of struggle. After that, I have some affection for shiny gold things. So I have like a, a, my, my advisor gifted me a mug, like a cup, which has a dragon on it. And this dragon is 24 karat gold as a graduation gift. And uh, and I bought a razor which is made of the like like real gold. So yeah, I, I buy the blades, but I don't buy the razors anymore because I believe the cost of having something that's gold and that's something you know is is almost the same of buying this on a monthly basis or something. Anyway, so yeah, just to show you what this is about, uh, Dheeraj, you can show that. So yeah, this is the Dollar Shave Club. Page. It's very minimalistic. There is no advertisement. And very basic. They haven't spent much on the advertisement campaign and all. Yeah. And then you can go through their contents. So they have the whole explanation yeah. of how it works. Look at everything. the blades option, right? In Gillette, yeah. looks at, look at the blades option where they have like hundreds and hundreds of products. You see this here? Six blades, $10. Yes. Razors um, and blades. By type, Set first one. Uh, the UI uh, is not very good. By type, razor and blade. It's right there, man. Yep. I use the the seven o'clock uh, now because I I break it into two parts and use it with my golden thingy. But the point here is, these uh, like for example, you see. They have so many products making it so complicated. I've been using it for 15 years. I still have confusions on how the three blade version is different than the two blade version. And it got so complicated that I totally stopped using it. And I said, OK, I will just use the blade, which is like as old as like from 1940s or something. The same design iteration. You see that it says Gillette skin card sensitive. It says Mark three turbo razor blade. It says pro glided razor blades. <laughs> what is the difference? You see that has like four, four blade units on that, right? And fusion power razor blade. And guys, I'm telling you, this is just a very simplistic view. If you go down into their inventory, there are hundreds and hundreds of products that make no sense at all, right? And now look at look at Dollar Shapes Club. It says six blades, four blades. Simple, right? And it says. Yeah, see, I picked the four blade one or the six blade one, right? They have like two products there. 
right? If you don't like it, you can return it, right? Shipping is free, $10 per month. I pay them $10 a month. You see that? They have like, uh, I, I hope you understand what, what we are trying to show you guys. It's not about the racer. It's not about the blade. It's not about the industry as such. It's about something even more fundamental, the power of design and how design can overpower established brands over the century. Probably when you now look at this case study uh, after class and read the paper and go back to this uh, reading this uh, or looking at their product portfolio, from a design standpoint, you can see probably visualize what I'm talking about, how some things, despite people being able to afford something that's made of gold, is too complicated or such a pain point to kind of like even visualize. For example, Dheeraj, if you go pull up the, what do you call that, the, the shaving foam uh, from Gillette, it's so complicated. We don't understand. Yeah, like if you go back to products and you say, shaving gel, shaving, shaving cream, shaving after foam. See that? Tons and tons of product, like sens sensitive skin, sensitive skin plus, sensitive skin plus plus, uh, pure shaving gel. W why, right? And once you see this in the counter, it's even more overwhelming. Despite this company having a having the market dominance, right? It's so overwhelming to have a look at. You see how simplistic this design is? You could pretty much build it in power apps. You know what I mean? So, and if you go to their, the, what do you call that? The, the, the shaving foam option in this website. Honestly, this is the first time I'm looking at their website as such because this product doesn't retail in my region. Uh, I still use Gillette to be honest, but yeah. Once I see this innovation, if I had something like this, I would have a monthly subscription and never, ever, ever go back to Gillette despite being 15 years with them, you know? You see how simplistic it is? They have like 10 products that you see, it says post shave dew, trial size, right? Trial kit, $6, prep scrub, super simple. Like instead of say, saying like moisture plus, moisture plus, plus, moisture plus, plus pro, why do I even need moisture, right? See, metal hand grip, refill blades, it's just, Anyway, it's a very interesting thing. I hope you can observe. And there are a lot of innovations in your own domain like this, right? Uh, you can just have a look and you can see how power platform and design derivatives fit into this framework. And you will have a lot of fun, not just doing your master degree, but also uh, when you are uh, in the industry out there, you could see some trends. Maybe you work for a big manufacturing, car manufacturing company, then you see a gap. And then you can fill this gap by simpler, simpler things. And you don't have to be scared of, oh, should I leave my job and go into doing something?